Hello, Peter Blackwood speaking. In my series of icons of uh, saints and holy people from the uh, calendar of the uh, Uniting Church commemorations, it's time to paint an icon of St Matthew. St Matthew, the writer of the Gospel of St Matthew. What I'd like to do this time is to experiment with a number of uh, particular pigments. I've been a long time fan of unbleached titanium and even longer fan and everybody is of uh, titanium white because it is so strong and is used uh, by nearly everybody for their uh, whites and highlights and things like that. But what I've discovered recently is titanium grey. And I used it in my last icon. And it worked really well. Now, what might happen if we used titanium grey Titanium, uh, white titanium and unbleached titanium, which is a, a low saturation yellow. What if we used those three as the principal colours and built the whole palette around those, those three colours? I'd like to give it a go so that the shading is done with the titanium grey and the flesh tone is done predominantly, although it would need some red in it, uh, with the unbleached titanium and then of course the white for, for highlights. That's an experiment I want to try with this icon. This model that I'm using is from uh, Monastery Icons. What I like about it is the posture but I am making quite a number of changes. One of the challenges for this icon is the positioning of the head, three quarters on and slightly dipped. And um, as those who have followed my uh, diaries will know, I very rarely uh, trace the image. So sketching the image uh, pre presents some particular issues that are different from a face-on uh, version. And in a recent uh, workshop with uh, Philip Davidov, I learnt a few tricks of the trade for this three-quarters on uh, uh, face presentation. I. Uh, Making some corrections here, I had the hand too high, the book too high, so repositioning all of that and uh, just, just checking on some of the details of the face. Another thing that I did decide to do was to uh, change the outer garment so that it comes over the, uh, the other shoulder as well. But I didn't do that in the sketch. So we uh, began with the panel by putting the halfway mark on it and marking uh, from the sketch that I did, which is uh, not a life size, a um, panel size sketch. So from that sketch, able to uh, position quite accurately on the panel where I want things to go. Here as usual, hog hair brush, uh, yellow ochre, with uh, water, just getting the rough outlines into place.
I'm just giving this a sand over just to knock back so that I can just see the uh, yellow ochre and water. But now I've added some uh, uh, egg to the mixture and this with a, a finer brush uh, will give a finer detail. Start to get those features working. Particularly working out where the shading will go. So I need to know where the eyes, mouth, nose, eyebrows, ear. So now mix the uh, shadow colour, which will be the new titanium grey. Mixing it with egg tempera, a bit of mortar and pestle, and with a number three brush. Doesn't want to be too fine, we're working in shadows here primarily. Got to get those eyes correct. Get the axis of the eyes correct. And pretty much the same as the axis of the mouth, or it'll look wonky. As shading goes, the titanium grey is not all that dark. So that will present particular issues, uh, particularly uh, for contrast. Will it be give a strong enough contrast between the very light highlights and the shadows in the face? We will see. At this point I decided to uh, change from the, uh, the model and have the outer garment draping over that shoulder, over Matthew's right shoulder.
and cut out some of the colour decoration there underneath the, uh, or on, on top of the, the uh, inner white garment, the clevis I think it's called. Continuing with the titanium grey, to put in more of the shading and uh, this indicates where there's an, a garment comes underneath. Some of these uh, main lines, the defining lines, just not going to be dark enough particularly when the titanium grey goes on that outer garment because um, the titanium grey underneath will not show through well enough so uh, we're going to need some Mars black we're going to need it in the hair too because it's got quite dark hair and this titanium grey is not going to be dark enough So Mars Black to the rescue. It's Mars Black not on its, its own, it is mixed with the Titanium Grey. The hair also needs the Mars Black mixed with the Titanium Grey. And here I'm putting in the, the main uh, sweeps of the hair and the beard with this very dark colour. Flesh tone time. Usually I, well I nearly always use golden ochre and um, which is a much more saturated yellow than, uh, than this but this is unbleached titanium. Will it work? I've put a little bit of Urkelana red with it so that it uh, has a, a, a bit of a, a blush to it. As far as flesh colour goes, for a Caucasian uh, flesh colour anyway, it looks pretty good. And I can see the shading 
of the uh, titanium grey still so that's good it's not ultra strong and that's okay it will it, it was a bit um, you, you can uh, run into trouble with these titaniums particularly unbleached titanium which is a very strong color in terms of its opacity so I have put a lot of egg with this mix. First lot of highlights going in, that is adding a titanium white to the unbleached titanium. I have to say, I had to put more white with it than I expected because, gosh, I mean, they're sort of so similar and uh, really got to <laughs> knock it around to get, to get an effect. some of that uh, Mars black mix to accentuate the features, the eyes, the nose.
put the whites of the eyes in, um, really using uh, the titanium grey tinting the white in the first instance and then some pure white just on one side. This definitely helps to turn the eyes towards the, the viewer. And now doing some highlights with pure titanium white. And a little bit more than I usually would uh, because this is quite a pale skin. Using a fairly dilute Ercolano red, uh, putting in the, the blushes. Crease in the top of the eyelid, uh, the um, tear ducts, and a lot of the shading, just given some blush, face and the hands. Need to come back later on and give some similar treatment to the, the neck, which I hadn't done at this stage. A little bit in the cheeks, just helps a bit. And the lips, of course. And now for hair. That Mars black with the uh, titanium grey, but quite dilute so that we can still see those heavy lines underneath. Both Mars Black and uh, the Titaniums are pretty strong, so needed quite a lot of egg. Now some titanium white for highlight. It's uh, mixed with the uh, the the, uh, the black mixture at this stage. Another coat with the, uh, the same mixture. And now some titanium white on its own.
outer garment in titanium grey. Looking at this last evening, I thought the his left shoulder was wrong. So I'm just changing that profile a little with the Mars black. It's going to take a bit of hefty uh, work with the titanium grey to cover that over. But it did need, the whole lot needed another coat. It's covering it okay. unbleached titanium it's lovely yellow with the low chroma the low saturation ruling in where the pages will go get this book nice and straight I usually don't do this but I should do it it's a much more accurate to say I had to go back on these fingers again and again I don't really like doing sharp outlines on anything much if it's not architectural or, uh, but um, this titanium, unbleached titanium flesh against this unbleached titanium book uh, became something of an issue in getting uh, contrasts to work. And with the Ercolano red, I painted in the pages with the book. book, it's Matthew's Gospel. He wrote it himself. Here's another thing I've not done before. I'm using this pen loaded with Ercolano Red to do the straight line. Straight lines are really difficult, but with a ruler and a pen, ha, huh, it's much easier. So, encouraged by the success of the first couple of lines, <laughs> I kept going. 
not sure how successful this was. It needed some work later on. They were a bit too far apart. This is a bit of clothing that I always struggle with. I guess I get a psychological block. But the end result was kind of okay. I did need to come back later on a couple of times to work on that bit of clothing decoration. Now I had a go with the uh, ruler again and it didn't work that time so got rid of it. Let's concentrate on something else like highlights on the outer garment, the grey outer garment. So adding a little bit of titanium white to the titanium grey. and adding more titanium white to the titanium grey. making some of the shading a little darker. Now with some titanium white added to the unbleached titanium for the first highlights on the undergarment. I want this garment to basically look like a white garment but its, it's uh, shadow will be this unbleached yellow colour.
more titanium white. In fact, this is titanium white on its own over the top of the garment. While we've got the uh, titanium white, let's go back over beard and moustache for more white. Had another go with my ruler and pencil for the pages, but I um, uh, got so excited I forgot to turn on the light so this image is a bit bit ordinary but used the pen and ruler for all the straight lines and there are a lot of straight lines when you're decorating a gospel book put in uh, guidelines and then use the brush to fill in the lines between Getting this to work, ah, it kind of, yeah, it worked. It's a bit dubious about it because we're putting in quite bold lines right across the the whole of the book. Will it work? Uh, putting in the uh, decorations, again going back to the unbleached uh, titanium to put in circles and squares and triangles which will then have bolder colours in the middle of them. 
and bing, in they went. <laughs> uh, didn't have the camera on at that point, but here are the white dots going in, and using this uh, uh, tool that has a sort of a bulbous end, using the titanium white, just stamping the dots. Voila. My big mop, squirrel mop, <laughs> favourite for doing backgrounds. Now this is titanium white tinted with slate. Haven't used slate before, a new pigment. It's greyer <laughs> than um, uh, the titanium grey. And as you can might expect, because it is, well, ground up slate, it is quite grainy, it's gritty. So you get these little, kind of little flecks in it, which is quite appealing. I quite like it. Herculano red in the pen put into the compass, finish off the halo, guidelines have been put in with pencil and again with Herculano red writing in the inscription. Well, I had fun uh, basing my palette around the titaniums, titanium white, titanium grey, and unbleached titanium. Uh, I also used Urcolano red quite a bit, particularly to, to tint the flesh tone, and also as the red colours on, on the book the halo and uh, the inscription. The background is slate, but it is uh, titanium white tinted with slate. It is a, if you like, a, a bluer grey. It's a more pure grey than the 
titanium grey, which looks actually a tint of green. So together they work quite well. It's been uh, a, a week's work. I started on Monday. It's now Friday. I don't work every day because I get so tired with uh, the concentration that's required with, uh, with painting icons. But uh, the outcome, I'm pretty happy with. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please give it a like. And I hope to see you again soon.